Hey YouTube. All right, uh, a lot of you have been asking for it, so here we go. Uh, FSD Beta 10, I'm gonna do some uh, unprotected left turns and some unprotected uh, left stop signs. So uh, let's see what we got. It's kind of in the morning, a little bit overcast, so hopefully the contrast on the screen will be okay without too much brightness. Uh, this is the first turn you've seen many times if you watch my video on protected left across three lanes of traffic with a median. All right, in this scenario, as it's set up, we've got a car right here. I'm going to try to keep this turn so we can see to the left again. It's at the stop line, and it's auto-creeping for visibility. It's checking it. got another car here in the median, so it needs to wait on that car, and it did. All right, we're not clear any longer to the left. There's cars coming, so it needs to wait. And here they come. So I, I think it did a good job. I, I can see very far down the road leaning forward. With the B-pillar camera, it's got about 200 yards of visibility. Okay, it's clear to the left now. It can go. Let's see how it does. It needs to go. Okay. Yeah, waited too long. There was that car. Uh, it made the right decision on when to go. It didn't give it the commit once it was in the road. It kind of crept into the road. And I think what it was thinking was, am I clear on the right side now? So that combination decision of crossing the first lane, going to the median, and then getting in the lane of the second is what it felt like it was doing. So we'll work on that. We'll try another one. Okay, turn two. Kind of a look back to the left. A little bit more visibility on this turn. A lot more opportunity to creep up and get a good view. It's wide open right now if it goes. No issues here. The right side, you're going to have to go to the median. You're not going to be able to get in the lane. See how low it is in the middle of the road right now, going really slow. Okay. It didn't have the right angle there. It was starting to creep into the line with that traffic. So it needed to kind of go parallel more. We're sticking out a little bit behind me. Cars are kind of having to go around me, behind me. Okay, but now that I'm going manually now, this left lane is clear. So getting into the median at a good angle was the safety issue on that one. It made a good decision to cross the road, but of course it was, it was wide open and easy. But once it got in the, the, the crossing mode, it went too slow. Granted, in that scenario, it could go slow, but on the previous turn, when it went slow, it, it, it needed to be going faster, so I'm not sure that it was thinking about that. All right, we'll try another one. Okay, turn number three. Got immediate on the left. Stop sign here, crossing three lanes of traffic. On this one, the B-pillar camera is blocked by some uh, trees over here on the left. There's a tree just to the left, so it cannot see right now. It stopped a little bit far from the uh, stop line right now. It's a little far back. So it says autopilot creeping forward, checking for visibility. It's, got a, it's flashing now. I don't think I've ever noticed that that little amber was flashing. Although it's not creeping. I don't know what it's doing here. I'm just going to sit here. There's nobody behind me. Huh. Not doing anything. It's not even asking me uh, to click the stalk or anything. Uh, just to get this uh, scenario moving, I'm going to just tap the accelerator a little bit. Unable to complete maneuver. Please assist now. I wonder if this is new logic and it knows it can't see. Huh. I'm going to creep up a little bit more manually. Please, it, it, This is... I, I'm gonna have to look into back in my other older videos or any of you on YouTube want to look back It's flashing red Please assist now. I, I think it knows maybe it doesn't have the visibility. So I'm gonna creep up further and see if it will um, Please unable to Okay, I'm creeping manually here. Okay now it went away So I creeped up to a point where I can see okay there's a car behind me. All right, guys, we'll reset that one. That was interesting. 
I couldn't wait there at that scenario any longer without creating a traffic scenario. Intriguing. We'll reset. Go. Okay, we've reset on that same turn that we were having some sort of visibility problem, as I would expect, but it was behaving a little bit differently. Let's see what happens again. Okay, so I'm stopped here in the exact same location I was before. There's a tree here to the left. Autopilot creeping forward, checking for visibility. Okay, it's doing it differently this time. Okay, it's creeped up to where I can see. It's a good point to go, and it's clear all the way. It should just go. It should just go. And it went into the left turn nicely. That was a good unprotected left turn with medium traffic. It didn't have a problem to contend with, and it kept going, which was good. It didn't pause in a bad spot in the middle of the traffic. I didn't see it put itself in a perfect scenario uh, in the median, but because the left lane was open, it was able to roll and continue. So I'll give that an A plus for the scenario. That's exactly what I would hope. I'm gonna try it one more time, just because we've got two different results now with the way it was creeping. Okay, take three on this uh, third scenario. I'm gonna stop describing it so much because I've already described it twice. All right, autopilot paused, waiting for our turn. Creeping for visibility now. Okay, it's creeping, it's creeping. Nice, can okay, it needs to stop. Okay. I actually saw that uh, truck right there hit its brakes because it saw me continuing. I'm not sure. It was creeping, but it wasn't creeping with any pauses built in. Um, it just kind of continued and went for it. Okay, so that's three different results on the same turn with various traffic configurations. Gosh darn it. I'm going to try it a fourth time. Okay, take four. Scenario three. I think this is the last one I'm gonna do no matter what. I think you guys wanna see some stop signs too. Okay, creeping for visibility. Okay, there's cars coming. All right, it, it, I bet it's gonna go for it here because there's a gap. Okay, it's going for it. Okay, it stopped. Okay, it stopped. It was clear on the right. It should have kept going that time, but it stopped in the middle of that traffic that you can see oncoming. Okay. Uh, well, each one of those disengagements, just so everyone is aware, goes back to a Tesla. This snapshot button is not required for those to be reported. Uh, it's a highlight button that they, they give us to highlight certain scenarios. Uh, Tesla Early Access has given us some communication that they don't necessarily need us hitting report. They say, just drive your car. We're really collecting disengagements. Uh, and they've said it over and over and over. So I think that's important for everyone watching these videos to know. I get a lot of comments about why aren't you reporting? Are you sending emails? Are you reporting? I do all of it, guys uh, and girls. That snapshot button, while I do like to use it when I see a different a new scenario, you also have to acknowledge that while I'm driving in these traffic scenarios, reaching up and touching that little camera button is sort of like the last thing on my mind in certain situations. Uh, but I know there are times that, that it's important to do that also. Okay, enough about reporting. Let's go find a few stop signs and see how they do. All right, on the way down to this first start stop sign uh, with an unprotected left and a much smaller traffic scenario, uh, there's a couple road humps here just to see how it's behaving. It looks like it's still targeting, slowing down for 15 miles an hour. There is a road hump sign with a 15 mile an hour warning on it. As you can see right here, I don't know that it's reading that sign to get to that speed or not yet, because I don't have any other scenarios to compare it to. These are very large road humps, not what I would call speed bumps. So, uh, and they are painted, so the, the visualization can probably see them. All right, look at that little no lane centering here, and it went way left. Here's the stop line right here. So it's too far left, okay? And it's about a car length behind the stop line. It's got to look back to the right and to the left for clear traffic here. Um, and interesting, there's a car that's going to turn left in front of me. And he's going to say, look at you, fella, you're in the wrong spot. 
interesting it looks like the Tesla almost got out of the way there I'm not sure okay it's completely clear so it can proceed here so other than that little lane swerve and not being in the nice tight right side of the road spot it handled the turn appropriately it started moving as that truck was crossing almost as if it knew it went around a construction worker there as if it knew it was in the way I, I'm not going to give it that much credit yet all right got some nice construction here so you kind of get in the witness um, speed limit set too fast here so I'm slowing it down how it's handling this construction and cones a little bit it went around that one construction worker but it didn't it, it definitely was going the full speed limit around those cones and in the neighborhood uh, it was at 35 and I think my current speed setting is uh, 14% over so it was definitely going too fast all right here's the, one of the interesting yellow flashers it should just proceed on this left turn in the past it stopped it does say stopping for traffic it kind of decided not to and it proceeded to the left so it handled that appropriately with the exception of the fact it turned on the turn signal uh, which it didn't need to do but it's been doing that for a while on curves now okay let me set up the stop sign scenario okay in this scenario I've got a stop sign here and then this is that complicated five-way stop sign I've showed several times but I'll talk about it as I go forward the reason I'm starting this scenario here at this stop sign is if you can see that um, I believe it's a fig tree is is completely blocking the left view here so a human can see through the leaves and can see motion uh, and I think it's interesting just to see how the view angle of the B pillar camera might see an oncoming car even though it's a, a neighborhood road um, seeing through intermediate objects is something I don't know much about and if anybody has any idea if it can do that hey post it in the comments but let's see how it goes here so I'm initiating it just so it's approaching the stop sign and interestingly it's coming over to the middle of the lane again this is something new in beta 10 uh, it is clear to the left I can kind of see through this tree here um, I don't know how it could but it's creeping it's creeping and it's going and it's clear so we did it okay with the low traffic scenario now here's this five way I've got one two three stop signs facing this side of the road it needs to acknowledge this first right one here and the stop line there but it has to creep up and look left here it cannot see and it needs to stop again okay it did not stop so I had to kind of I'm gonna give that one a highlight to see left here this is where it has to creep so it can look down this lane so it incorrectly made the assumption that when it didn't see traffic when it was stopped back here okay my camera cut off at the end of that last explanation but I think you got most of it okay now I've got a scenario set up with this tight look back to the left and it's got to cross that median in the past it's tried to go through the median almost if it didn't see it and it's not mapping it yet it's clear but it okay it looks like it, don't clip the curb don't clip the curb okay it did it fine uh that time no traffic to contend with uh but it visually i think went around that median because it was not being mapped at, at the moment okay i'm gonna try that five way one more time and then uh i think we'll call it a day one other thing i want to point out here uh, that someone commented uh from my video yesterday uh, some of the FSD beta users, um, when they engage FSD beta, they're keeping this narrow display. I want you to notice on my car, for some reason, and, and I don't know why, uh, and just to show you, I am on 4835.1. Um, so I'm on FSD beta 10. But when I engage autopilot, my car goes to the full screen like it did before. Okay, I've engaged the same scenario as the five-way. It is in the middle of the lane again, so if an oncoming car was going to turn right, I'm in the way right now. It says it's checking for visibility. I can't even see now, but it looks clear. Okay, it's clear. And now it's coming to the right. And here's the one, two, three stop signs facing this way. There is a pedestrian jogger there, uh, and it's mapping appropriately, and, and she's crossing the road safely out of the way. So it's stopping and now it needs to creep it needs to be it needs to say creeping it it didn't it was going for it 
Okay, and if you notice, when I disengage, it goes back to the narrow view. Okay, so it's not doing that appropriately. I'll, I'll report and highlight that again. The disengagements are also being captured. All right, um, summary. FSD beta 10 has some changes we've seen. Uh, I think that that scenario three first turn where it said it was unable to complete it was with some flashing icons was a little something new I've noticed. Um, I definitely, and I have heard others report this also, am noticing that it's taking a whole lane when there's not a lane center marking, especially at a stop sign, which creates a problem when oncoming traffic need to get in, into your lane. Uh, like that first stop sign I did where that truck was coming around, it, I was in the way a little bit. The car did start to move out of the way when it saw the traffic, but it was, it was already in a bad situation. Uh, and we have reported that to Tesla. They have asked a few questions about uh, stop line locations, and, and we've given them that. So I guess we'll just keep testing, and we'll see how these iterations go. Um, and all Tesla is asking us to do is drive our cars. They keep giving feedback that says you don't need to test certain scenarios as we just did today in this video. They would rather us just get out and drive and capture disengagements. Uh, that is what they're after. Disengagements can be captured three different ways. The brake pedal, the steering wheel disengagement with friction, or I can push up on the stock, which disengages also. All three of those are captured the same. We've also gotten information from them that says when you're using the accelerator to add input to the system, such as a, we're calling it feathering a little bit, where you're feathering the, the speed you would like to see, that is not captured at all at this time. Um, and I, we told them that that would be a great input because we're trying to make the car drive a little more human-like uh, but at, at, at the moment that they're not they're not doing that uh, we've also asked them to make this little button bigger again um, it's a little hard and unsafe at times to get up there and try to tap that and if you've noticed me sometimes I tap it more than once to try to make sure I tap it uh, and each time I tap that I use one of the five to six snapshots that can be stored uh, before the, 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 the oldest one gets overwritten. Okay, that's all I've got today. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Please leave comments and the feedback uh, below if any of you uh, see anything. In my video yesterday, one of the, the very first commenter noticed that uh, I accidentally captured the Starlink launch trail. Um, and when I was out there testing, I had no idea uh, I was missing the launch, which is unfortunate. I usually like to watch them. So comments are appreciated. Take care, everybody. Have a good day.